Hi friends, welcome back to day three of card week. Today I thought I would share with you a watercolor resist technique. So I'm starting out with my base cut at four by eight, scored at four inches. So the front of the card will end up being four by four. So here I'm using a die from My Favorite Things and I'm cutting out two pieces from the 6x6 pattern paper and those are being die cut at 3.5 by 3.5. And, and then I will also be using a die from that same die set and cutting a piece of white cardstock to 3 by 3 and that piece of white cardstock is the cardstock that I will be doing my Distress Ink technique on. So I'm just going to run that through my Big Shot and then I will have all the pieces of my card ready to go. So I am going to go ahead and take that piece of white cardstock and I'm going to prep it with my Magic Powder Bag to get ready to do my Distress Ink technique on. Now I cut two pieces of pattern paper here because I wasn't quite sure which pattern paper that I wanted to use. So I'm grabbing my stamp sentiment that I'm going to be using and that stamp is from Wildflower and & Company and it comes in the kit. And I'm going to use my Versamark which is a sticky ink to stamp that sentiment in the center of my white cardstock. So I prepped it with my magic powder bag and then I'm going to grab my Versamark and use that on my rad sentiment. So I'm going to stamp that in the very center of that 3x3 three three piece of a white cardstock. Then I'm going to go ahead and grab my white embossing powder and I'm going to sprinkle that on over the Versamark. So as soon as that's all sprinkled on, you probably still won't be able to see it that well, but as soon as I start adding the Distress Ink, that embossing powder is going to go ahead and resist the ink and you'll be able to see the sentiment a little bit better. So right now I'm going to go ahead and heat up my heat gun and make sure that it is nice and hot before I bring it to my cardstock. As soon as it's hot, I'm going to roll it over that embossing powder just till it melts. As soon as it melts, I'm going to go ahead and pull the heat off so the embossing powder doesn't deboss. So after that's all ready, I'm going to place that down on my mat and get started with my watercolor technique. So I'm going to use the packaging and I'm going to be using Distress Ink and Wild Honey, Picked Raspberry Peacock Feathers, and Chipped Sapphire. And I'm going to take that Distress Ink and I'm going to place it in the four corners of my piece of cardstock. So first starting with that picked raspberry, I'm just going to smush that ink down on my packaging and add a little bit of water. So as soon as I get all that on there, I'm going to place that ink in the upper left hand corner of my cardstock piece and kind of smush that ink around and make sure I'm getting some of it up against that piece of embossing that I did just so it can start to separate and resist. Between each application of Distress Ink, I make sure to clean off my packaging really well to make sure that I don't muddy the colors and keep all the colors nice and separate. So I'm adding a little bit more water and that next color is the Peacock Feathers. So I'm gonna add that in the lower right-hand corner of my cardstock and then clean off again. I have the paper towel close by just to make sure that I can dry it off right away because I don't want the colors mixing and again um, muddying up. So next is my wild honey color. So I'm going to add some water and that color is going to go in the lower left hand corner of my white piece of cardstock. So I'm going to smush that down and get that going 
on that lower left hand corner and again making sure that I get it up onto that sentiment and then dry it off. My last color is my chipped sapphire and that one's pretty dark and so I wanted to make sure that I didn't get it over any of the other colors too much because it was so overpowering. So I'm gonna add some water and then I'm gonna take my paper towel and dab a little bit of that off just to make sure I don't have as much on the packaging and that it will just kind of stay in that upper right hand corner. So after I get all that done, I'm gonna dry it off again extra well and clean off my packaging and then my the front of my card is all done. So you can see there how the embossing powder resist the distress ink. So I now I grab all my card pieces and I'm gonna start layering up my card together. So I'm trying to decide now which piece of pattern paper that I like better. And I finally decide on that one with the half circles that I like that one a little bit better. So I probably should have used some watercolor paper to do that technique on, but I just had that white cardstock um, and I wanted to use what came in the kit. So what I did, because it, that paper was a little bit warped, is I just glued another piece of cardstock to the back and it kind of flattened it out and took out a little bit of that warping and then it just laid flat and it was not a problem. So if you don't have watercolor paper, you can totally still do this same technique and it'll work out just fine. So that clothespin that you saw me clip on the top of the papers also comes in the kit. And when you get your kit, it's going to be holding together the two pieces of twine you see there, the turquoise twine and the natural color twine. So I knew I wanted to use some twine and because I chose that natural colored clip, I wanted to pull the natural colored twine in there also. So because that clip is dimensional, I needed to use a little bit of dimensional adhesive to pop up that stack of paper. So I added my dimensional adhesive and that adhesive is the American Crafts Sticky Thumb Adhesive and it's been working great so far. I've totally loved it. Um, I also got that in the Click Kit shop. So that twine was kind of giving me a hard time. So what I decided to do was grab some washi tape and tack it down with some washi tape. So just the twine would be peeking out over some of the corners of that card. But because I'm placing the paper stack over the twine, you're not going to be able to see any of that washi tape. So it'll work out perfect and it'll stay right where I need it to stay. So after I decide that is that I'm liking that and that's where I'd like everything to go, I'm going to remove the dimensional adhesive off the back of my paper stack and glue that down onto my card base. So as I was looking at this card, I felt like the watercolor piece and the pattern paper were kind of getting lost together. So in just a minute, you're going to see me grab some vellum and I'm going to cut a little piece of vellum that fits right behind that watercolor piece and is going to give a little bit of separation between the watercolor piece and the pattern paper, just kind of softening those edges and adding a little bit more texture and dimension, which I always like. So that pretty much completes the card for today, day three. If you missed day one or day two, I'm gonna leave links down below for those. If you wanna go ahead and get this card kit from Click Kits, I'll also leave that link below. If you have any questions, you can leave a comment below and I will get back to you. I hope you're enjoying this week of cards so far and that you'll join us for the crop on October 3rd on Saturday for World Card Making Day. Thanks so much for stopping by and have a great day. Bye-bye.